time for maths with Mr. Thomas. Olivia, guess what it's time for? It's more graphs. Woo! So here we are with chapter 15, lesson number 8, sketching log graphs. Now this is something that we have covered very, very briefly way back in the functions chapter, but I'm going to go back to it now we're at the end of the logs chapter and I'm going to look at log graphs in a lot more detail and give a lot more examples. So log functions, logs are of the form of y equals log base a of x. And since they're the inverse of exponentials, we can easily graph them. Anybody remember how do you graph an inverse function? What do you do? Help us out, Matthew. Good, you reflect it in the line y equals x. So here we've got this exponential. Woo! That is y equals 2 to the power of x. If we reflect it over this grey dotted line here, that's line y equals x. If we reflect over, we will end up with our log graph. We know that exponentials always pass through the point 0, 1 and 1a. If you flip the x and the y coordinates about, then we will get these two points. We will get 1, 0 and a, 1. And these are two points that log graphs of the form y equals log base a of x will always pass through. This one here, because we've got 2 to the power of x, well, the inverse of that will be log base 2 of x, and because it's log base 2, that passes through the point 1, 0 and 2, 1. If it was log base 3 of x, that would pass through 1, 0 and 3, 1. If it was log base 7 of x, that would pass through 7, 1. And we've come across this already, but the y-axis, this line here, your y-axis, it's known as an asymptote. And that means it's a line that the graph is going to get closer and closer and closer to as it keeps going down towards negative infinity, but the two will never come into contact. They will always get closer and closer, but never touch. So, let's try some examples. Example 1, this is the graph of y equals log base 10 of x plus a. Find the value of a. Now, because we have log base 10 of something, we know that that graph should always be passing through the point 1, 0. However, we can see here that this graph does not pass through 1, 0. It passes through negative 2, 0. So what has happened to the graph, Sandy? Yeah, you can see it's moved three units, three places to the left. And because it's moved in the negative direction, what that means, if you think about your graph transformations, is instead of log base 10 of x, we'll have log base 10 of x plus something. The plus moves it in the negative direction. And because it's moved to three places, you know the value of a is just going to be 3. And x plus a in the brackets will move the graph three units to the left, which this one has done. Well done, Sandy. Example 2, the diagram shows the graph of f of x equals a log base 2 of x minus b. Find the values of a and b. Once again, you need to think about your log graphs. If you have log base 2 of something, well, you know that is going to pass through the point 1, 0. But once again, you can see the graph is not passing through 1, 0. It has shifted to the right. How many places to the right has it moved? Let's move 2. It's going from 1 to 3. Therefore, you know that the value of b has to be 2. If you have an x minus 2, well, the minus will move it in the positive direction, which means then it has moved 2 units. Therefore, the value of b is just 2. After that, you need to work out the value of a. Well, f of x, that's really your y. So we've got y, we've got a, we've got x, and we've got this b. We know the value of b, and if we knew x and y, if we knew another point, we could sub them in, and the only unknown would be a. What's that you're saying, Sahana? Yeah, you're perfectly right. We do know a point. We know this point, 4, 3. So if you sub in the 4, 3, in place of x and y, or f of x, then it'll let us work out a, if you're also using this value of b. Therefore, if we sub that in, we will have 3 equals a, log base 2 of, x becomes 4, so it's 4 take away 2. From there, well, we know 4 take away 2 is obviously 2, so we would write that. So we'd have 3 equals log a, log base 2 of 2. And something that you need to remember, if we have log base 5 of 5, or log base 3 of 3, or log base 2 of 2, what's that equal to? 
yeah, that's just equal to 1. Log base A of A is equal to 1. It's one of the rules. So log base 2 of 2 becomes 1. So it's just, just really 3 equals A times 1. In other words, A is just going to be 3. Therefore, we have then found the two values A and B with 3 and 2. Let's try another one. Example 3, find the coordinates of A and B. So here we've got y equals 5 log base 10 of 2x plus 10, that is the graph, and we've got this horizontal line here, y equals 8. So we need to find out A and B. Let's go for A first of all. Well, anybody have any ideas how you would find that? James, what are you thinking? Good, yeah, you can see that's where the graph crosses the x-axis. And what's the y value when it crosses, James? Good, it's going to be 0. So you can say that the graph crosses the x-axis when y equals 0. Therefore, let's sub that in. So replace y with 0. We have 5 log base 10 of 2x plus 10 equals 0. From there, if you divide both sides by 5, you would end up with log base 10 of, and then in brackets, 2x plus 10. That would still equal 0, because 0 divided by 5 is still 0. Uh, from there, we need to find the value of x. It's difficult to do when it's in log form. What could we do to make it a little bit easier, Ms. Amel? Good, rewrite it in exponential form. Perfect. So, in exponential form, Ms. Amel, what would it be? You got it. You would have base at bottom top, so it's log base 10. So, base draw a line at the bottom to the other side, so it would become 10 to the power of 0, and draw your line at the top, and in brackets we've got 2x plus 10. If you're unsure of base bottom top, look back to one of the first lessons on logs in this chapter. But yes, 10 to the power of 0 would equal 2x plus 10. 10 to the power of 0 is... Good, that's just 1. Anything to the power of 0 is going to be 1, so 2x plus 10 equals 1. Subtract 10 from both sides. Divide by 2, and we have found this value of x. Therefore, if we want the coordinate of a, well, x is going to be negative 4.5, and the y value is 0. So, we've got point a. Finding out point b, how do we go about doing that? Yeah, you can see here that you've got this horizontal line when y equals 8, so we know the y value will be 8. So go back to this formula here and replace y with 8. So, that will give us... 5 log base 10 of 2x plus 10 equals 8. Once again, do the same thing. If you divide both sides by 5, you'll end up with log base 10 of 2x plus 10 equals 1.6. Again, what would you do? It's difficult to work out x when it's going to be in log form. So, good, you rewrite it in exponential form. And if you rewrite it, again, base bottom top, so you've got the base of 10, draw a line at the bottom to the other side, so it's 10 to the power of 1.6, and your line at the top, you're left with 2x plus 10. So, 10 to the power of 1.6 equals 2x plus 10. 10 to the power of 1.6, what's that going to be? Yeah, you need your calculator for that, and that will give you, to a few decimal places, 39.8107. Going to write it down as quite a few decimal places, because it's not the final answer. From there then, that's what 2x plus 10 is going to be. Subtract 10 from both sides. So 2x is equal to 29.8107. And divide by 2 and to one decimal place. That will give me 14.9. Therefore, I know the x value of this coordinate b is going to be 14.9. And the y value, well, you know y is equal to 8. So you get the point 14.98. Woohoo! Example 4. Two parts. Part A, draw y equals log base 5 of x and y equals log base 5 of x plus 1 on the same diagram. And part B, draw y equals log base 5 of x and y equals log base 5 of 1 over x, again on the same diagram. For this, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to think, first of all, because it's log base 5 of x, I know that would pass through the point 1, 0 and 5, 1. So that's dead easy to come up with. Your y-axis is going to be the asymptote, so that's the line that's going to get closer and closer to, but it's not going to touch. What we then need to think is, right, well, if we have log base 5 of x, and then we add 1, what happens when you add 1 to the function when you graph it? Well, that means that the graph is going to move up vertically one unit. Or, if it was f of x plus a, it would move up a units. Therefore, every single point, instead of being at 1, 0, it would be up at 1, 1. Instead of being at 5, 1, it would be up at 5, 2. So, you will end up with something 
that looks like this. Obviously, in the question, you are asked to draw them in the same diagram. I'm just using two here to help me explain it to you. So you would end up with something like this. There's your log base 5 of x, and there's your log base 5 of x plus 1. Every point has just shifted up 1. Something else that you may be asked for, you may be asked where this graph crosses your x-axis. And if you are, well, what you would need to do is you would need to think, right, well, that graph of log base 5 of x plus 1 would cross when y equals 0. Crosses the x-axis when y is 0. So replace x with, replace y with 0 here. So you've got log base 5 of x plus 1 equals 0. You need to rearrange that to find x. So if you subtract 1 from both sides, you would end up with log base 5 of x equals negative 1. From there, if you rewrite it in exponential form, it would be 5 to the power of negative 1 equals x. And 5 to the power of negative 1, if you write that with a positive index, it would go to 1 over 5. Therefore, the graph would cut the x-axis at 1 over 5, 0, or a fifth, 0. That's just something extra. You probably won't be asked for that, but if you were, that is how it is done. Part B, draw y equals log base 5 of x. Well, again, that's just going to be this graph here on the left and log base 5 of 1 over x on the same diagram. So for this one here, what you need to think is, right, well, if we have log base 5 of 1 over x, how else could we write that? Well, because we've got log base 5 of something divided by something, we could split that back up using our log rules. So we have log base 5 of 1 minus log base 5 of x. From there, if we have log base 5 of 1, well, log base a of 1 is always going to be equal to 0. So if we have log base 5 of 1, that will just equal 0. The reason is, if you think, imagine that's equal to something, and then rewrite it in exponential form, you're going to have 5 to the power of something equals 1. Well, what's that something going to be? Well, it's to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 will equal 1. So log of base 5 of 1 will equal 0. So you'd have 0, 0 minus log base 5 of x, and from there then, that would just give us negative log base 5 of x. So what we're thinking then, we've got log base 5 of x, and then we've got negative log base 5 of x. So what we're really doing is we've got our function f of x, and then we're making it negative. We're taking the negative of that function. And when you have that, well, if you have negative f of x rather than f of x, it's going to flip the graph in the x-axis. So all you want to do is flip every point in the x-axis. So this point here, because it's lying in the axis, it will just stay there. And this point here at 5, 1, well, that will move down here, and your graph will just be reflected, so you will end up with something that looks like that. And again, that's going to be both graphs on the same diagram, I'm just using two to help explain it. Let's try another one. Example 5, state the values of A and B given this graph here, where we have A0 and 8B. And this is a graph of log base 2 of x. Now the first one should be dead easy because we've just got log base 2 of x. We're not adding anything. We're not subtracting anything. We don't have x in the brackets. And again, adding or subtracting is just log base 2 of x. And we know those graphs will always pass through the point. You got it. 1, 0. So the value of a is just going to be 1. To work out the value of b, how would you do that? Brilliant. Yeah, you could sub in those values into y equals log base 2 of x. So replace x with 8 and replace y with b. So sub that in, and you will end up with that. We need to work out this value of b. We've got log base 2 of 8. That is what it's equal to. Again, it's difficult to work out when it's in log form. What could you do, Valley, to make it easier? Yes, rewrite in exponential form. So base bottom top, it's log base 2 of 8. So we've got 2 to the power of b will equal 8. So 2 to the power of b equals 8. And from there, it's dead easy to work out what b is. 2 to the power of what gives you 8? Well, it's 2 times 2 times 2. So it's going to be 3. And that will be your answer. So A is going to be 1, and B is going to be equal to 3. Therefore, we've got the two points, 1, 0, and 8, 3. Part B, sketch Y equals log base 2 of X plus 1 minus 3. So again, for this one, you need to think about your graph transformations way back many chapters ago. So for this, well, if you have f of x plus 1 in the brackets, what's that going to do to f of x? 
good. It's going to move the graph one place to the left. And if we have f of x minus 3, what does a plus or a minus on the end do? Good. The minus 3 will move the graph vertically down 3 units. So to graph y equals log base 2 of x plus 1 minus 3, where we're going to move the graph one place to the left, this plus 1 will move it to the left one unit in the negative direction, and the minus 3 on the end will move every point down 3. So we will end up with something that looks like this. Again, at this point at 1, 0, if we move it one place over, it will end up as 0, 0, and then we move it down 3 units. So it would be a 0, negative 3. With this point 8, 3, if we move that one place to the left, we'd be at 7, 3, and again move it down 3 units. So the 3 will go down to a 0, so it would be at 7, 0. And your asymptote, instead of being the y-axis, that would also be moving as well, one unit to the left, as you can see here. And that will be your answer. Example 6, find the value of q, given y equals log base 3 of x minus 4. We've got the point 5, 0 and q, 2. So for this one here, well, because we've got q, 2, well, we could sub the, those values in in place of x and y. So substitute q, 2 into y equals log base 3 of x take away 4. From there then, if you do that, if you replace x with q and y with 2, that's going to give you 2 equals log base 3 of q take away 4. Again, it's difficult to work out when it's in log form. What makes it easier, Chelsea? Exponential form. You got it. So, if you rewrite that in exponential form, base bottom top, there's a base of 3. So, it'll be 3 to the power of 2. And that will equal q take away 4. Obviously, 3 to the power of 2 is 3 squared, which is 9. So, q take away 4 is going to be equal to 9. And therefore, q is going to be equal to 13. And that will be your answer. Example 7, sketch y equals log base 5 of x take away 2, showing both asymptote and two points on the curve. Well, because we've got log base 5 of something, we know that graph would pass through 1, 0, and log base 5 would pass through 5, 1. So we know those two points. But because we've got in brackets x minus 2, well, that's when the graph, sh graph shifts to the left or the right. The minus moves in the positive direction to the right. Therefore, to sketch it, you will move the graph two places to the right. So, 1, 0, if you move that over two places to the right, will go to 3, 0. And 5, 1 will move over to 7, 1. Also, the vertical asymptote as well, instead of being x equals 0, that will also move two places to the right and end up at x equals 2, rather than x equals 0. So the graph will look something like this. Really, you've just taken your log graph, log base 5 of x, and you moved every single point to the right two places. So instead of being at 1, 0, it's now at 3, 0. Instead of being at 5, 1, it's now at 7, 1. And instead of having x equals 0, you've got x equals 2. And that is your answer. Try these questions, see how you get on. It's sketching log graphs. It's in the Heinemann Hire, page 305, exercise 15K. Good luck. Enjoy graph transformations.